What a beautiful day. And it's a day that you and I can get away and just forget about the worries of the life of the world, but they're gonna be there tonight when you go to bed and wake up in the morning. And you know, I've been thinking about the state of our country, America, America the beautiful, what we love so dearly. But if you listen to the politics and to the news, you know it's not so beautiful as it once was. And there's a reason for that. And it's a reason that you and I all share in. The Bible tells us that you and I are experiencing the judgment wrath of God. And there's a specific reason for that. I want to prove it, but I want you to answer it. I want you to be clear in your own mind exactly what that means. And so what I've done, I brought a CD, DVD here. And you look at this. And what I'm going to do is just pull some names out of the air, but it may be yours. It may be John. It may be Sue. It may be Larry. It may be David. It may be any number of hundreds of names. And if I could take all of your thoughts, all of your intent, the day you were born, and I could record them on this DVD and play them before all these people out here tonight and let them see what you were just thinking about one hour ago that your spouse, or boyfriend, a girlfriend, a loved one knows nothing about, never shall, you would shudder in horror. I know that to be true because the Bible tells us that's true. And one way I can show it to you is this, by the word of God. One of the great things America has done, we've cast God out of America. We cast him out of the courtrooms, we've thrown his Ten Commandments, the moral law of the way. You remember Judge Moore? He went through all those trials and terrible situations because they did not want God's law, the Ten Commandments there, where we get our own laws based upon. So I ask you, you think maybe you're a good person and that your name shouldn't be on here. Let me ask, have you ever told a lie? If you have, that makes you a liar. Have you ever stolen anything? If you have insignificance of the value or the size, or even when you were a child, that makes you a thief. Gentlemen especially, but ladies as well, have you ever looked at another person with lust, with sexual desire? Jesus himself says, if you do so, you have already committed adultery in the heart. And the Bible tells us that all liars, all thieves, all adulterers, all fornicators cannot enter the kingdom of God because we've broken his moral law. But God has done something wonderful for us. He sent his son, the person of Jesus Christ, God incarnate, God in the flesh, who paid the penalty for our sin. There Jesus willingly came to this earth. Man, like you and like I, nailed him to the cross and he bore God's righteous wrath upon him. He himself bore your sins, my sins, in his body on that tree so that we don't have to die and be separated from God forever. One day you will die. Maybe some in this crowd tonight will not be here tomorrow. They will go into eternity. Time on the clock as you know it will stop. You'll be in eternity. You can't come back. You can't change a thing. God doesn't want that. And yet God's wrath is poured about man because we have rebelled against him. Just look at our government, what they're doing. Look at the issues of marriage. Look at the issue of abortion. Do you know that life begins soon after conception or at that time, blood starts flowing in the veins, though it's microscopic. And when blood flows, God says in his word that the life is in the blood. And when we eliminate that blood, when we remove it, we are killing a human being. That's a fact, but there's forgiveness for that as well. You know what God has done? I already mentioned it briefly. He came into this world, the person of the Son, Jesus Christ. He suffered a bloody death. God's wrath, he crushed them like granite on the cross. Do you know Mary and the disciples and those who were following Jesus couldn't even recognize him because Isaiah says he was beyond recognition. And there he died and rose again on the third day according to scripture. This is God's promise for you. God wants you to be set free. And if you think you're not, I could play this DVD tonight, put it on a screen, and you wouldn't want your wife or your husband or your children ever to see what thoughts go through your mind. And those thoughts condemn us. They condemn us. God has given you a conscience. You know right from wrong. You know you shouldn't steal, but you have. 
you know you have looked at another woman other than your wife and you've lusted. You've sinned again. God cannot let sin into his presence. So he did this great, wonderful, majestic gift. He did a miracle. He died and rose again. And what he says, if you will repent of your sin, recognize your hopeless state, your losses, turn in repentance. That means turn around the opposite direction. Choose to no longer sin by God's strength and power and put your full trust in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. God will forgive you. God will set you free. He will make you a child of God. You are not a child of God unless you are truly born again, as the scripture says, born from above. It is a miracle. It's a work that God does in the heart and soul of man. The Bible says when he does that, he gives you a new heart. No longer he, you have a heart of stone. He removes that heart of stone and gives you a heart of flesh. And your conscience bears witness to that when you are saved, when you are born again. God wants you to know him personally, not just today, for the rest of your life, for all eternity. The Bible tells us ever so clearly that they show that the work of the law is written in their hearts while their conscience also bears witness against them. Your conscience accuses you every time you break the law and you know it. And the only way out, the only redemptive fact that you have is in repentance towards God and turning in faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy believing and leaning upon all that he has done for you on Calvary. You know some verses, I'm sure some of you, one that's so well known, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe it in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. In the American language, we often overlook what the word believe or believest means in that first word there, believe. It means entrusting one's well-being into the hands of another. When you repent, you turn to Christ and you entrust your eternal salvation, your forgiveness of sins in the person of Jesus Christ. For him and him alone, there is no other option. There is no goodness you can do, nothing. So I just beg of you, if you will do that, whether your name is John, Mary, Sue, Larry, that would have been played on this DVD and God would judge you by it, you can erase it. It turns out to be a blank disc. All God sees is the shed blood of Jesus Christ. You are clothed in his righteousness and he says welcome. But if he doesn't say welcome to you on that day when you die, when you face him in judgment, he will cast you out into the lake of fire. It sounds horrible because it is horrible. He wants us to be aware how awful a place it is to spend eternity. So please repent and turn and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. God will do a miracle for you. Read the word of God. He will cause you to grow. He'll take that new heart he gives you that he puts in there and he'll mold it and the desires you have now that go directly against the Ten Commandments, he will wipe clean. He'll give you new hunger, new desires for the things of God. The Bible will open up to you like never before. This is just not some plain old book that you get in a bookstore. It's the very Word of God. So friends, please, don't allow your record of life stand before God without the shed blood of Jesus Christ covering it. Thank you.